What's up YouTube, it's your boy back at it again with another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to get Google Chrome extensions into iOS and iPad OS. So in iOS 15, the operating system that Apple released in 2021, they actually gave us the ability to get Safari extensions into iOS and iPad OS. Unfortunately, the Safari extension store within iOS is super limited right now. I'll put something up on the screen. It's basically just privacy apps and dark mode with very few exceptions thrown in the mix. And don't get me wrong, those things are really nice, but I actually actually want to be using all of the extensions that I love using when I'm using my favorite Chromium browsers like Brave and Vivaldi. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to use the Notion Web Clipper as an example, and I'm going to show you how to implement that into your own iOS or iPad OS. Quick disclaimer here at the top of the video, this absolutely will not work for every extension. And I think these videos should be viewed as sort of a novelty and not something that, you know, this is guaranteed going to work and port over 100% of the functionality of your favorite Chrome extension. There will definitely definitely be bugs and little missized errors and stuff because we are porting Google Chrome desktop extensions into iOS Safari. And so if you're not willing to deal with sort of the technical challenges and the bugs that come up along the way, I'd say just watch the video and learn how to do this and what it's about. But if you're going to be frustrated by actually implementing those things, maybe best to stay away until Apple has actually made this process better and better. It seems like they are really focusing on bringing all of these extensions that we all love using in Chrome to the Safari ecosystem and empowering developers to do that in a easy kind of way. If you guys watch the end of the video and if you guys have been following sort of this series and the saga of us getting Chrome extensions and porting them over to Safari, whether it be on Mac OS or now on iOS, I am going to be giving an update on some of the issues that have popped up in the latest Mac OS operating system, Monterey. Go down below and smash the like button for experimental extensions and let's level up your brain. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys are new to this whole process of getting Chrome extensions into Safari, I'd suggest that when you go through and start implementing this for yourself, you first check out the original video that I did on getting Chrome extensions into Safari in the first place. The place that we're going to start this iOS video from is you've already extracted your CRX from the Chrome extension and you have all the source code loaded up into Xcode. I just don't wanna recreate the same video a hundred times basically and waste your guys time more than I probably already have with that long intro. So I will leave all of the relevant links to the CRX extractor and everything like that down in the description. So if you are looking for a full guide, definitely check that out. But for now, we're going to start the video assuming that you've already imported your Chrome extension into Xcode and that you've already gone through the steps of that original video that I'll link up here in the cards. Okay. So once you have an extension project in Xcode, you're going to have a file that looks something like this. It'll be a .xcode proj file. You might have some of these folders, but you won't have the iOS ones yet if you followed the tutorial from the first video. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up a terminal and you're going to type in these two separate commands. The first one here is going to be sudo xcode select dash s and then give it the path to your xcode xcode.app, hit enter, give it your password, good to go. Second command here is going to be xc run, and we're gonna give it the same xcode contents, developer, user, bin, Safari web extension converter. And we're gonna give it the dash dash rebuild project flag, and then we're going to give it the location of your xcode project. So you're gonna copy this, and you're gonna paste it in here. And so what that's going to do is it's going to take your Mac OS version of this Safari extension, and it's going to give you these iOS extension folders here. And this is a feature that was released as part of the latest iOS and Mac OS suite. And so you are going to want to be up to date with iOS 15 and then Mac OS Monterey to be able to run this script and to be able to get that outcome. So once you run this second command, you're going to hit enter, it's going to do a bunch of stuff. It's gonna say, do you want to overwrite? You're gonna say yes, and then open up a new version of Xcode. So now that you've done that, you should have this iOS app and this macOS app and this iOS extension and this macOS extension within your, whatever your extension is folder within Xcode. I think at this point, there might be a ton of you who run into issues where your extension has some problem or it didn't convert well into the iOS version of the app. Unfortunately, I don't think there's like a really good way to fix that problem unless you're going to yourself 
dive into the code and figure out what the problems are with the iOS version of your app. I'll leave a link down in the description to the official Apple video covering the Safari web extension converter that was released as part of the developer day in 2021. In that video, they do talk about some common issues that people might be facing when they're trying to convert their own extensions into iOS versions of their extensions. And so maybe that video can help you debug your own extension. But if you do have limited technical knowledge, I think this is where you're really going to be stuck if you do have problems. And if you think about like, what was the intended version of this tool? The intended version of this tool was for real developers who actually developed these apps within Chrome to use this Safari web extension converter and to convert their own apps to future release on the Safari extension store. So if you have limited technical knowledge, you might be sort of at a dead end here. But for the rest of us, like my Notion Web Clipper extension, it didn't have any big major problems. And so we'll just continue with the demo and I'll show you happy path, what should happen if your extension sort of is built to work properly in iOS. So what you're going to do first now is you're gonna connect your iPad or your iPhone to your Mac and you're going to up here at the top, if you can see this, you're going to select Notion Web Clipper iOS, and you're gonna select your connected device as the iOS device that you want to deploy to. So I'm gonna click iPad 4 in this case, and we're gonna deploy the app to my iPad. So now if you just click up here on build, the play button up in the top left, it's gonna give you build failed, and you're going to run into these two annoying issues about signing. And so this is going to bring us to the big problem that has been introduced in macOS Monterey is that you now need a development team to sign for these apps. And if you take it all the way to the very final step and you try to publish, you're actually unable now to publish even for a local development team without being part of the Apple developer program, which is that $100 a year developer subscription sort of the Apple environment. And so unfortunately, we're no longer able to publish in the same way that we were in that second video where we permanently added those extensions to our Safari environment, basically. Unless you have that developer license, what we still are able to do is publish our own apps locally into Safari and into iPad and iOS. We just are going to have to allow unsigned extensions when we do that in a macOS environment. But for iOS, we can just continue the tutorial here and I'll show you how to get it working fully for yourself in iOS. So you're gonna see those two errors. You're gonna come back up to the folder icon here and you're going to click on Notion Web Clipper or whatever your app is called. And you're going to come up to signing and capabilities up by general. And you're going to, on the team selection, it's defaulted as none. And you're going to give it the, your personal team. It's going to do some stuff and it's going to say, all right, cool. If you don't have a personal team yet, you can hit add an account. You'll basically click this plus button. You'll do Apple ID. You'll hit continue you'll log in and then you will have created your personal team. And so then you can come back here and select that personal team. And so we're not only going to need to do that for, we can see we'll have four over here. One is for iOS and one is for iOS ext extension. So we'll do that for both of these. And then also on debug, we're gonna do that for both of these. So debug and release and extension and iOS extension, we're going to give it the personal team for all four of those. And if you're doing it on Mac OS, you're gonna to need to do the same thing, debug, release, Mac OS, and Mac OS extension. And so that's going to fix that little signing error that you're probably going to get if you hit play. And again, that's a new feature that's been implemented in Monterey, which is a little unfortunate and makes that video that I made earlier in the year maybe not so relevant anymore. So now if you hit play again, up in the top left, it's going to build successfully. And again, you could run into issues here on the build if there were other errors besides the signing. And now it's saying running Notion Web Clipper on iPad. So I'm gonna record my screen here on iPad. And I'm gonna show you what that's like in real time. So right here it's saying could not launch Notion Web Clipper. And you're seeing on the iPad, it's saying your device management settings do not allow using apps from developer, Apple development, and then my Apple ID. On this iPad, you can change this in settings. So I'm gonna hit cancel here on my iPad and I'm gonna go into settings. And if you type in device management into settings, you'll find VPN and device management. And then you'll get this Apple development, not trusted, and then your Apple ID. You'll click on that and you'll click trust Apple development and your Apple ID. And you'll see that the app that it was trying to give you Notion Web Clipper in my example, is right here. So you'll hit trust right there. And so now in the iPad, if we look for Safari extension and we just go to content blocker, then we can see that it tried to download the Notion Web Clipper. So let's click on Notion Web Clipper here and we'll just turn it on. And now let's open up Safari and see if it worked. Up in the navigation bar, 
in iPadOS, you can see that there's this little puzzle piece extension thing right here, and you'll see a similar one in iOS. On iOS, you might have to hit the AA and it'll come up with uh, extensions. And again, I'll show you on the screen what that looks like. But here on iPadOS, you're going to just see this puzzle piece. You'll click the puzzle piece, you'll click on Notion Web Clipper. It's gonna take its time loading and you'll click allow, always allow, and you'll click allow on every website. And so now I can actually take any website. Let's look for BISC, new Bitcoin decentralized exchange. Maybe I'm going to do a video on this in the future and I want to learn more about BISC. So I'm going to hit the extension. I'm going to hit Notion Web Clipper. I'm going to hit save page and I'm going to add it to uh, maybe my dashboard. So you'll see BISC, a decentralized Bitcoin exchange, YouTube demo. So we'll hit save page and then we'll open a notion. There you go. So it worked. We have it right on my dashboard, BISC and all of the information about BISC. And so this is a really cool way to get a lot of different Google Chrome extensions that were built in a iPad and iOS friendly way into your iPad and into your iOS in Safari. So again, at this point, your extension might look completely ridiculous by the time that you put it in iOS or iPad OS. And that's just sort of a relic of how the extension was built, right? The extension was built in Google Chrome. It wasn't built to be on your iPad. It wasn't built to be on your iPhone. Some of the ratios and the screen things might look kind of goofy. I think especially for the iPhone because the screen is so much smaller. I think this will probably be one of the last, if not the last video that I make on the Safari extension, web extension converter, whole Google Chrome sort of situation. Unless Apple comes out with even more updates to the ecosystem, which I'm hopeful they do maybe once a year. If there is another video that's related to this topic that you guys do want to see, go ahead down in the comments and let me know. I do still respond to all the comments and I definitely see all of them. And then if you are having trouble debugging your own solution, I'm probably not going to be able to help you, but we can do our best down in the comments comments to help each other out. I think if your extension totally doesn't compile, there's not going to be a lot that people are going to be able to do to help you. I think it is going to be a really long and arduous sort of development process with some of these extensions but other ones like the Notion Web Clipper are just going to work right away. Go down below and like the video if you learned something so that YouTube shares it with other people who are trying to get Chrome extensions on their iOS and iPadOS devices. And then subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.